Hello everyone on this edition of Oxford News This Week, Oxford Village News making the cut behind the lens. We'll call it making their way up a hill. And in our last story, homecoming right here in Oxford. I'm Jim Hughes, that and more on this special edition of Oxford News This Week. The Oxford Village Council is moving forward with plans to plant four trees at Scripter Park. The project has been in the works for some time now, with the village at one point working with the students at Oxford High School, who last year expressed interest in working with the village to maintain the Memorial Park uh, for lives lost in the tragedy that again occurred back in November of 2021. However, after not hearing from a student group since last fall, the council unanimously decided at their September 12th meeting to move forward with their original plans of planting trees, noting that the fall, uh, fall with fall on the horizon, there's a small window of time to get the trees in the ground before winter. winter. Uh, the council did approve a purchase of a four inch maple trees at $1,200 a piece. While the council approved moving forward with the project, there was also some vocal uh, sentiment about uh, being in support of the student group putting in that memorial park. If you're still interested in doing so, the trees are expected to be placed outside the area that was aside near the student group area to add to its memorial uh, completion. Also in Village News, the Village of the Oxford Police Department will be actually purchasing new body cameras after a request was made by Chief Mike Solwald. Uh, the approved unanimous, uh, it approved unanimously at the September 12th meeting the Oxford Police Department will purchase three body cameras from Axon for a cost of 23, a little over $23,000. Uh, the purchase is expected to be spread over a five-year annual cost of just over $4,700. In another village news during its meeting, again on September 12th, a lot of work there, uh, the Oxford Village Council did not approve a second and final reading of a proposed mobile food establishment ordinance. Instead of voting unanimously for the ordinance to be reworked and presented again at the next council meeting, at its previous meeting the council had discussed implementing a time limit for mobile food establishments to be in specific locations, as well as guidelines for where food is allowed to be stored. Council members also felt more discussion was needed regarding the permits and applications of mobile food trucks. And other news as well, uh, the Parent University, a series of workshops, seminars and talks, resources in the Oxford Community School System setting this up to help parents tackle items uh, such as bullying, cyber safety, understanding math, and much more. The other goal of Parent University is to increase the understanding of teaching and learning as well as providing opportunity for families to connect with one another and learn from each other. Any caregiver of the student in the district can attend uh, with the we their website and be, uh, is being updated on a, a weekly basis. Uh, the workshops are scheduled. There are uh, currently plans for a workshop on bullying, a five session course on parenting with, in the love and logic way, uh, math help workshops also part of this, one to help understand the individualized education plans and more uh, current offerings at no cost. Just visit the website below for more information. Sergeant Daughtery honored at the VFW Post 334, Oxford Township salutes uh, Oakland County Sheriff Sergeant Eric Daughtery uh, uh, for being named Law Enforcement Officer of the Year by North Oakland Veterans and Foreign Wars. That's the VFW Post 334A, Lapeer native who graduated Lapeer East High School in 2010. Uh, Sergeant Daughtery, I should say, uh, entered the law enforcement field in 2014 and spent the first three years of his career with the Van Buren Police Department in Wayne County. He joined the Oakland County Sheriff's Office back in February of 2017, spent most of his time at the Oxford Township substation. In September of 2022, he was then promoted to the rank of sergeant and assigned to the county jail. He will transfer to Rochester, he then transferred to Rochester Hills, that substation, and then the following week was nominated by the VFW Award Sheriff Sergeant Rick Meza, uh, second in command at the Oxford Township substation, 
This is the second award for the sergeant who has entered, uh, who has entered from a local veterans organization. Uh, in June of 2022, he received Deputy of the Year Award from the American Legion Auxiliary Unit 108. Helping people is what he likes to do. It's part of the favorite part of his job. He and his family have proud, have proud traditions of serving in the law enforcement. Uh, though he, he no longer works in the Oxford area, this township holds a special part for him and again, all his accomplishments. For more information, North Oakland VFW, post 334. Uh, you can contact Jim Hubbard, the commander at 248-496-1213 if you would like any more information and possibly awards to be given out. Kudos to Koenig Materials for holding an absolute delightful community appreciation event. Uh, the 1,200 acre site in, on Lakeville Road, it was very well attended. Guided tours and the opportunities to explore some cool earth moving equipment made for an educational and entertaining experience for, the, for kids. And there was some food there as well. The Troy based My Food Truck event served up tacos with pulled pork, sandwiches, coleslaw, macaroni, and cheese. It was a scrumptious date uh, at the uh, food trucks. Thank you to uh, Caning uh, Materials for being great neighbors and gracious hosts in this community event. And then also G's Pizzeria, who always uh, contributes or helps out, and the Oakland County Deputy Sheriff's Association, the OCDSA for short, uh, the Family Benevolent Fund uh, teaming up to offer folks a fun evening filled with fantastic food, side-splitting comedy, and best of all, the event will support a great cause like helping first responders and their families and others in need. On Friday, October 6th is when this is taking place, sponsored by G's Pizzeria. They'll host the comedy night at the Oxford Restaurant in the Legacy 925 building. Of course, that's located at 925 North Lapeer Road. Doors will open at 6 p.m. with a buffet featuring G's mouthwatering pizza and a fresh salad that will be available at 6.30. Uh, beginning with comedy at 733, talented comedians Steve Lund, Camro, and Matt Cohn will also take the stage. Tickets for the event to help out a great cause, $50 each or $400 for a table of eight. They can be purchased visiting the web address below. The OCDSA Family Benevolent Fund will receive $20 from each ticket sold at the event for the people um, that's 18 or older. Since it was established four years ago, the OCDSA Family Benevolent Fund has distributed well over $500,000 in support to first responders, their families, to assist in such things as uh, paying uh, utility bills, medical expenses, prescription expenses, even mortgage and rent expenses with utilities, uh, costs with uh, transportation from back and forth to the hospital. The fund also assists people who are facing financial hardships due to disasters in the response on the November 30th, 2021 tragedy at Oxford School. Uh, the Benevolent Fund established uh, the endowment fund through the Oakland County College, was a creation and scholarship program for the, uh, for the students. Basically, any student who is enrolled in the Oxford School District on the day of that tragedy is eligible for a $500 scholarship to the Oakland County Community College. Uh, to learn more about this, Check that out at OCDSA Family Benevolent Fund, or you can visit their website listed below. And in other news, uh, the Clinton River Watershed Council will hold one of its weekly cleanup events at Stony Lake Park. That's located at 1397 North Lapeer Road. On Wednesday, October 4th, from 10 to 12, volunteers of all ages and skill levels are welcome to participate prior to the registration. It's not required unless a group plans to attend and learn more uh, please feel free to direct your visit uh, to CRWC environmental scientist Lydia Nichols, who can be reached by calling her at 248-601-0606, extension 29. Or again, you can email her at the, uh, her email listed below. And the monthly free CPR class, uh, they're held monthly, obviously, annual, I should say, the Oxford Fire Station number one. It runs from 6 to 8 p.m. at night. Registration online at the web address, again, below. A lot of web. Keep that pen and paper ready. The two-hour class is for anyone who wants to learn effective uh, CPR, help family and friends and coworkers and strangers in medical situations. These classes are not intended for people seeking course completion or certification cards. Questions about the classes, easy to find out. You can contact Oxford Fire Station number one at 248 969 
9483 and ask for Fire Captain EMS Coordinator Kevin Snell. And a separate segment that we have come to know and love, it's called Behind the Lens. Watching three Oakland County Sheriff's Office patrol vehicles uh, at the Oxford Homecoming Parade uh, lifted uh, C.J. Carnacchio's heart, and it fills with immense pride to see these vehicles making their way. The vehicles were driven by Deputy Scott Rafalski, Justin Barnes, and the Resource Officer Sergeant Rick Meza, uh, second in command of the Oxford Township Substation. The Oakland County Sheriff's Office has been contracted, contracted uh, to protect Oxford and serve Oxford Township since back in February of 2000. We simply call this making their way up a hill. As always, CJ, your photo helps us make a stop in time. If you have a picture or a snap and you'd like to send it to us via our email or Facebook page, maybe you'll see your snap on behind the lens. Just make sure to email it to manager at OCCTV.org and maybe you'll see your picture here on Behind the Lens. Up next, Dave Kenny has Auto Talk and Science in the News. You are watching a very special edition of Oxford News This Week on Oxford Community Television. Welcome to this edition of Auto Talk. I'm Dave Kenny, and these stories are taken from Automotive News. Kia America and Hyundai Motor America are recalling more than 3 million vehicles in the U.S. for separate issues that could cause an engine compartment fire. Both automakers are urging vehicle owners to park outside and away from structures until repairs are completed. The Kia recall covers the following vehicles. 2010-19 Borrego, 2014 to 16 Cadenza, 2010 to 13 Forte, Forte Coupe and Sportage, 2015 to 18 K900, 2011 to 15 Optima, 2011 to 13 Optima Hybrid and Soul, 2012 to 17 Rio, 2011 to 14 Sorento, and 2010 to 11 Rondo. The recall affects about 1.7 million vehicles for an issue with the Hydraulic Electric Control Unit, or HECU, that could cause an electrical short, which can trigger an engine compartment fire while parked or driving. Kia told NHTSA it was not aware of any injuries, crashes, or deaths. It's believed that over time, the HECU experience a, an electrical short circuit condition that results in excessive current, thereby increasing the risk of an engine compartment fire while driving or parked. However, the exact cause of the electrical short circuit remains unknown, Kia said in a statement on September 27th. To fix the issue, dealers will replace the HECU fuse. Dealers will be notified on November 10th and vehicle owners will be notified starting November 14th. Hyundai, Kia's Korean sibling company, is recalling about 1.6 million vehicles in the U.S. for an issue with the anti-lock brake system module. In Canada, the recall affects about 327, Hyundai's spokesman Ira Gabriel said. That's 327,000. The module could leak brake fluid internally and cause an electrical short resulting in an engine compartment fire while parked or driving. The affected vehicles are the 2011-15 Elantra, Genesis Coupe, and Sonata Hybrid, 2012-15 Accent Azera and Velostar, 2013-15 Elantra Coupe and Santa Fe, 2014-15 Equus, 2010-2012 Veracruz, 2010-2013 Tucson, 
and 2015 Tucson fuel cell and 2013 Santa Fe Sport. Hyundai told NHTSA there have been 21 vehicle fires and 22 thermal incidents such as smoking, melting, or burning in the U.S. based on reports received from June 15th of 2017 to June 1st of 2023. The automaker said there have been no crashes, injuries, or deaths. To fix the issue, dealers will replace the anti-lock brake system fuse. Dealers and vehicle owners will be notified on November 21st. In our next story, Samsung's automotive battery division is planning to expand a pair of factories in suburban Detroit by 218,000 square feet in a $41 million move that could add 368 jobs. Samsung SDI America Incorporated, which has its North American headquarters in Auburn Hills, Michigan, would add to its 628 employees in Michigan with the new positions expected to pay $37.50 an hour plus benefits, according to a briefing memo from the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. The expansion will support the company's fast-growing lithium-ion battery business for electric vehicles, leading to a doubling of manufacturing capacity with the addition of a second production line, the memo said. A $5 million performance-based grant approved September 26 by the Michigan Strategic Fund Board was needed to keep the investment from going to Kokomo, Indiana, where the company is teaming with Stellantis on a 34 gigawatt hour battery factory expected to launch in 2025. Samsung SDI moved into its Auburn Hills location in 2019, investing $62.7 million in creating 461 jobs. That project received $10 million in Michigan Economic Development Corporation grant, as well as a property tax abatement from the city of Auburn Hills and a six mil state education tax abatement. For the expansion, the company will also benefit from free advertising on the city, from the city on electronic billboards along I-75. Oakland County, Michigan Works pledged to help in the way of workforce training. Well, that's it for this edition of Auto Talk. I'm Dave Kenny. Stay tuned to Oxford Community Television. Welcome back, Oxford Sports. Today's sports brought to you by Oxford's Detroit Wing Company and Barron Industries. We thank them a lot for helping us with football. Clarkson Varsity Football took down an OAA Red Foe uh, Wildcats on Friday, kind of putting a damper on that homecoming night. The scorer, ooh, 39-13. Yes, we were there. We covered it. It will be on OCTV. Uh, the Wildcats took a lead at five minutes in to go in the first quarter with a six-yard touchdown pass from sophomore Jack Hendricks to senior Brody Moore. The point after was a success that put Oxford at 7-0. That would be the only time they would lead the contest. Uh, Clarkson again walking away with that victory. Clarkson's record 3-2, 3-0 in the OAA Red. They host West Bloomfield at 4-1 and 2-1 and and this Friday. Oxford fell to 1-4, 0-3 in the OAA Red. Wildcats will travel to Rochester Hills on Friday and take on Stony Creek, which has the same record as we do, 1-4 and 0-3 and and in the OAA Red. Game time is 7 p.m. at Stony Creek. Again, uh, just a, a, a side note, Stony Creek lost to Lake Orion 49-28 last Friday. Both Oxford and Stony Creek at the bottom of the OAA red. They'll actually be fighting for position to advance themselves. Somebody will walk out uh, in, uh, above the other. Oxford Girls Swim and Dive defeated Clarkston in their OAA blue duel meet. That happened a few, uh, Thursday ago. Uh, the score there, 100 to 86. Individual accomplishments in sport, the sports section of the Oxford Leader. Check it out. Tristan Karjakarski, uh, Krajikarski, uh, finished the first place in diving with a one meter at 245.20. 
Uh, she scored on six dives. Ellie Sider finished a second place with 244.5. And Reagan Burns, fourth at 194.10. Uh, the Oxford Flyers knocking it out on the diving board at the swim and dive. We're going to have to get the young ladies in here and talk about what they think about when they make their dives. Oxford High School students raced out of the field with excitement. Last Thursday night, they celebrated with the friends and classmates of the Oxford varsity soccer team. I believe our own Jebediah Calhoun and uh, Joe Hollywood Calhoun were there to cover it. Wildcats ranked number four in the state by Michigan High School Soccer Coaches Association at that time. Had just defeated Clarkston, ranked number one. The Wildcats moved up in the OAA red from an OAA white back in 2021. Uh, the season, have, uh, they have lost to the Wolves before. They are fifth in the nation. Two of Oxford soccer players also double bill on the football team. Drew Katie and Jay Katie go uh, to football and then also enjoy their time on the soccer field, the Katie brothers. Again, you can see all of them contest the swim meet, football game, and of course that soccer match right here on OCTV. Today's sports brought to you by Oxford Detroit Wing Company and Barron Industries. I'll be back with more. Dave Kenny's got one more segment, and I'll be back to close it all out. You are watching Oxford News this week. Canines Free Rescue does just that. Rescue stray dogs for new families. But they need your help. Become a volunteer at Canine Stray Rescue League of Michigan. Take dogs for walks, help them socialize with others, and help them get adopted. Fill out an application and help a family add a new member today. Hey, this is former Detroit Lion Rob Rubick and former Lapeer, Michigan school teacher. You're currently watching OCTV, Oxford Community Television. Enjoy it. Welcome to Science in the News. I'm Dave Kenny, and this story is taken from New Scientist. Sorry, sci-fi fans. If you drop a piece of antimatter, it will fall down to the ground just like regular matter, according to the first ever measurement of how these strange particles are affected by gravity. While this rules out suggestions that antimatter could fall up, along with the existence of repulsive matter and anti-gravity machines, there is still enough uncertainty in the measurement for there to be a slight difference between regular matter and for new physics to be at play. Quantum mechanics says that many particles should have an antimatter counterpart, identical in every way apart from an opposite electrical charge. This flipped charge should change how gravity affects the particle. All massive particles should move through space in the same way under gravity according to Albert Einstein's relativity. But it has been exceedingly difficult to test whether this is true because antimatter annihilates when it meets its opposite particle, making it hard to produce and store enough of it. Now, Jeffrey Hankst at the Aarhus U University in Denmark and his colleagues have measured how gravity affects anti-hydrogen, which consists of an anti-electron or positron and an anti-proton. While normal matter on Earth accelerates, falling at a rate of around 9.81 meters per second squared, also known as g, the team found that antimatter fell at a value between 0.46 g and 1.04 g. In other words, definitely downwards. Many people, when they think of antimatter, think of the science fiction thing of it'll fall up. We definitely rule that out, says Hankst. Well, what we can't rule out is where being some small difference between the accelerations of matter and antimatter. Hanks and his team built a series of vertically stacked chambers to produce and store antihydrogen for their so-called alpha G experiment at the CERN particle physics laboratory near Geneva, Switzerland. The chambers are fed with positrons from a radioactive source and antiprotons from a particle accelerator, both of which are slowed down and kept at temperatures just above absolute zero. The two types of antimatter particles are then combined into a single chamber, producing around 20 neutral anti-hydrogen atoms every four minutes that are held in place by powerful magnetic fields. The researchers then slowly release the magnetic fields at the top and bottom of the chamber for 20 seconds and counted the atoms that came out in both directions. 
because some of the atoms will randomly have enough energy to come out of the top of the trap, Hengst and his team were looking for statistical imbalances of more particles coming out the bottom towards Earth. From a technological point of view, it's really outstanding, says Tara Shears at the University of Liverpool in the UK. Particle accelerators are typically concerned with making particles go as fast as possible, but to trap them at speeds slow enough to measure gravity effect is very difficult, she says. While the team found that the anti-hydrogen falls towards Earth with enough precision to rule out the idea that antimatter repels rather than attracts, more experiments currently underway, such as the Aegis and G-Bar experiments at CERN, will help us better understand that there are maybe more subtle differences between matter and antimatter, says Shears. Well, that's it for this edition of Science in the News. I'm Dave Kenny. Back with you on Oxford News this week in a segment we call The Last Story. Nothing like a small town homecoming parade. Thank you to the Wildcats giving us another fantastic parade, a great week of homecoming and celebration Friday. Uh, the event was a uh, uh, fun event, a beautiful night weather-wise, an opportunity for the students, alumni, and community members to celebrate each other with a little hometown pride. Enjoy some of these behind CJ's lens from the homecoming parade. As always, CJ, thank you for your lens. You bring it right home to us. We appreciate that. We thank everybody. Hey, despite the loss for the football team, everybody enjoyed themselves with homecoming this past week. Hey, we thank the news gathering sources from the uh, Oakland Press, Oxford Leader, the Oxford Township Facebook page. Credits going out to CJ Carnacchio and the Oxford Leader. OCTV can be viewed on Spectrum Charter Channel 191 and Channel 99 on the ATT Uverse system, YouTube, Rumble, and Facebook uh, page. You can even download the Roku app, watch OCTV programming there. Maybe you're a, uh, you have an idea, a local group uh, for producing a public service announcement or a show idea, or maybe you'd even like to volunteer at one of our uh, meetings. Give our office a call at 248-628-9658. Thanks to producer, director Kyle Stage, Jebediah Calhoun, he's learning master control. Uh, we also want to thank, of course, uh, Marissa Haruska. She edits the entire program for us. Allison Miller, who's on assignment, she's our writer. She should be back shortly. Program coordinator, Dan Weiss. Program director, Connie Miller. And station manager, Terry Stiles. For everyone here at OCTV, I'm Jim Hughes, hoping you have a safe week. And I invite you back next time. And again, we will take a look at Oxford News this week.